Hello, and welcome to Cutting Edge Health on January 1st, 2022. We're going to be talking about today fat loss as well as stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine in 2022. 
If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum, an interventional pain and regenerative medicine specialist who helps people figure out how to be able to get back to doing the things that they want to be able to do. So today, one of the things that we want to talk about is that uh, context of fat loss and stem cells. And most people are like, how do those two things even remotely go together? Well, we have no idea about that. So one of the things that's present is, so when normally we're talking about doing stem cell therapy, we're traditionally doing a bone marrow harvest is how most of the time it's occurring. But there is another way to be able to do this. And I just thought, you know, it's New Year's. People are thinking about, hey, resolutions, how we're going to do things better, both on a personal level as well as maybe on an aesthetics level of saying, you know what, I might need to lose a little bit of weight. And in thinking about this, I was like, well, how does that fit to regenerative medicine at all? And although we're not talking about taking 20 or 30 pounds off, there are ways to be able to take cells the same as you would like um, the aspect of liposuction and use those cells to be able to improve different parts that are giving you issues like your knee or your hip or your calf or spine or other elements by isolating for cells that can be able to improve and augment healing. So one of the interesting things about that is something that's called an SVS. So SVF stands for stromal vascular fraction. It's a way to be able to take that cells that are present within the fat and then be able to find a way to take that fat and be able to utilize the cells. Historically, one of the ways of being able to do this was something using collagenase, which is a way of being able to break down collagen. When it's done within that context, you can be able to see quite a few cells that are in place. The downside to doing collagen is that it actually violates some of the things that here in the States, the FDA prohibits. In the States, <clears throat> there's something that's called minimal manipulation. And so you can't isolate with manipulation and then try to place those cells back into a space that's not quote unquote appropriate. Mm -hmm. However, there is a company that's out there that's called Lipogems, which is FDA approved that allows for that SVF to be isolated for in an FDA approved manner. And that's what we're going to talk about. So historically, when you look at collagenase and you compare it to the way that lipogens does it, there are different upsides and downsides to be able to take a look at this. Now, I know this looks fancy, but as I've told people before, one of the things that we're going to do in our channel is to make sure that we're breaking it down so that people can really be able to understand it. So in essence, we can be able to make sure that we explain it to you like that, right? And so what we're going to do is talk to you about what does this really mean? So on the left-hand side in blue is the way to be able to use this with collagenase or enzyme-based methodology, where you go in, it's expensive, you use enzymes, and you can be able to get a higher number of cells, but it violates the way that you can be able to um, isolate here in the States. The other way is to use it without enzymes, without collagenase. You use a mechanical methodology to be able to isolate for the cells. You don't get quite as many cells, but you get enough cells that it can be viable to get a reaction. And for most people, they would say, you know what? If you can be able to take some fat off and be able to improve things like I have pain or I have a clicking or I have a catch in my knee or have a problem with my neck where when I try to turn, it gives me a problem and an issue and I have to turn my whole body or I have an issue with my elbow and when I extend or move it about, the same thing with my shoulder. What if you could do that and you can do it being able to use tissue that you don't necessarily want? So one of the ways to be able to do that is the following. So you take this liposuction procedure, you're able to take out some of the aspect of the fat, you isolate it, and then you find a way to rotate that fat isolation and be able to produce an SVF component that then you can re-inject using ultrasound or imaging of some sort where there's fluoroscopy into the area, in this case, obviously the meniscus, in order to get a response. So for those of you who are saying, you know what, I'm really thinking about being able to improve my ability to be, able to be more active, to be able to walk. Lipogems may be a potential option for you. So when you say, okay, how can we be able to acquire this? The way lipogens works is you actually are able to take those fat cells out. You do a mechanical agitation, which is able to isolate. It produces these types of syringes. And then from there, you can be able to inject into different areas, whether it's the knee, other things along those lines in order to get your response. 
So what most people would say is, okay, well, if that's the case, how does that compare to the context of collagenase, right? So you have a problem with the knee, you can be able to isolate out for that fat tissue, and then you could be able to re-inject. Well, the way it compares is, so if you were to do traditional collagenase, which isn't allowed here in the States, you can get quite a few cells that are pl in plentiful in nature. But when you use lipogens, you can actually get a pretty good number as well. And it's approved by the FDA. It's feasible. And you can get a response that you otherwise wouldn't utilizing a, a treatment option that's approved. So most people would say, well, okay, are there any supportive literature to be able to identify this? Um, help me out. And so we have a paper for you. So there's a paper if you want to be fancy and you want to look up the science-based aspects of it. There's something that's called Adipose Tissue Derived Stromal Vascular Fraction in Regenerative Medicine, a brief review of biology and translation. So I know that sounds super fancy, but for those of you who want to kind of get into the science and understand it, it's one of the ways to really be able to understand some of the underpinnings of how this works, how it can benefit you, and really how this came about. So when we talk about potential utilization, the actual company um, started putting things out, give or take, in around 2010. The first adipose cells were isolated in 2001, so almost 19 years or so ago. And at that time, it wasn't SVF in this traditional fashion, right? It was a different dynamic that was isolated for. But now that we're able to be able to get that SVF component that's present, the cellular yield um, is actually pretty decent. The first clinical applications of this was in 2007, and originally it was more for cosmetic breast augmentation. And so obviously that's been somewhere around 15 years or so ago. And the technology has constantly advanced since then. So initially, clinics were starting to do the non-mechanical form using enzymatic only. And there was this huge boon about, oh, fat stem cells and blah, 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 blah. And the FDA, they stepped in about eight years or so ago in 2014. And that's why they drafted this measure of minimal manipulation and why it's appropriate to be able to be limited in that context. When you look at lipogens, one of the things that they are able to do is that they're FDA compliant. It actually gives you tissue that doesn't decline as you get older. There's minimal risk of infection. It's a comprehensive treatment option that doesn't require for you to be able to do a lot of different things. It's a closed loop system, which means that you get the cells that come from you and from no place else. And at the end of the day, there's been more than 35,000 treatment options that have been done since 2015. So for those of you who are thinking about how can I be able to improve my overall function and how I might wanna consider maybe a little bit of fat loss at the same time, a viable option, for how to be able to look at regenerative medicine in 2022. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. Let us know how we can be able to help you and help you meet your goals in this new year. All the best and have a great day.